Hello and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yes, today we have Apollo OS 9.4 up on your screen. Why, Q? Why? Well, remember my earlier video about the Vampire V4 and getting it updated? Well, Apollo OS has been updated and I, it's been about, oh gosh, I don't know, a year and a half since I've done a video on Apollo OS. I figured it was time. This computer rule So, one of the first things you're going to come across is when you get the image, you go to the Apollo OS website. Again, as always, links in the description below. Go to the Apollo OS website and download this image file, burn it to a 32 gig compact flash card, pop it into your vampire after you've updated its core to the latest release core, which you can also get from the website. And I'm not gonna talk about how to do all that stuff because I've shown that before. And there's also lots of videos online at their own website for that stuff. But anyway, pop in that card, boot it up, and it's gonna load right up. And you may just, you could just start working, start clicking around and doing things if you want. But there's a couple things you're gonna wanna do uh, to help maximize that card you've got in there. Let's say if you put a 32 gig card in there or a, uh, you know, a 64 gig card. So let's get that out of the way first. There's also some initial preferences that you're gonna to wanna to set that it may or may not ask you at boot. So if it doesn't ask you at boot to set all your preferences, I'm gonna show you how you can do that here. So one of the things you're gonna do first is go into Apollo OS and your icons may not look like this so they may be in a different order. Don't, don't, don't panic. It's okay. And we need to find, so one of the first things you wanna do is verify that your, your 32 gig CF is fully expanded. Now, if you downloaded their 32 gig image, it should be expanded, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. And if you go into tools here, you can run this Apollo Max, and it's gonna ask you, hey, click, do you wanna expand your CF card? Click on okay, it'll ask you some questions. You're gonna confirm it by pressing enter, and guess what? If it's already been done, it just doesn't do it. It says, hey, dummy, this has already been done, and that's it. If it hadn't been done, it expands it, and it'll, it'll let you know that, hey, now you've got to reboot, and you've got all of your CF space, so that's, that's what that tool there is for. That's what that tool is for. Now, after doing that, you're gonna to wanna to go to the HD toolbox, all right? Go in here and you're gonna be like, whoa, this does not look like any HD toolbox I'm familiar with in Workbench. Well, this isn't Workbench, this is Apollo OS. You wanna make sure you click the ATA.device. All these other things are basically the other various uh, drive devices in your unit. Like your network is considered a drive, you've got your micro SD is in there, its own special partitions are in there. So go ahead and just click OK. Make sure you got ATA selected, 43.4, this first one right there. Click OK. And you'll see the drive show up. This is your compact flash. And as you can see, it's around 30 gigs. Partition drive. Now, I've already done it, so you're going to see this here. But you'll see a big, chunky, empty one over here, OK? You click on that. You say new partition. Give it a name. I called mine DH3. And that's it, leave everything else alone, okay? Don't try and get fancy and change file systems here or anything like that. Click save, it's most likely gonna ask you to reboot, okay? Now, when you reboot and come back, or if you don't reboot and the drive does pop up down here as uninitialized, what, what's your first reaction gonna be, right? It's gonna be to go up here, click on the drive, and go icons, format, right? So don't do that. That part still doesn't quite work. What you need to do is just pop open the shell down here. I know, don't, don't, don't panic. You gotta go into the shell. And you need to format the drive this way. And because you use the defaults in HD Toolbox, it's an SFS file system. So the, the command is S. I'm gonna put this in the description below too. This, so if you can't hear me or see this on the screen, it's SFS format drive. And then the name of the drive, in my case, it was DH3. Okay, including that right there. And then you gotta say the name of it, and I called it uh, storage in my case. And that's it, and click enter, and it'll ask you, hey, you sure you're gonna do this? It's gonna wipe it out. Boom, you're done. Uh, just for safety, of course, reboot. So when you come back, you'll have your amazing uh, storage partition here with, you know, it's 22 gigs free. Look at that, I already put Lightwave on there. Of course I did. And that's how you get the, the space freed up. Now, one of the other neat things about this is out of the box, if you plug in a network cable in this release 9.4, you have internet. 
So if you want to install your own browser, the included eyebrows browser demo they give you, unfortunately, is expired, so you can't really do anything with it. But you know, you can just open up a, a shell, for example, and just type ping, uh, you know, Google. And there you go, 17 millisecond response time. Doing good, yes. So internet out of the box works. You've got internet. You can, you can sneaker net using the micro SD card over here. Uh, you get your um, eyebrows installed. In fact, if we go over here, I think I might have some stuff on here. Yeah, in my network folder here, I actually have some goodies. Clean up by name. Yeah, I've got my eyebrows key and the latest version of eyebrows on Amy SSL. So I can install those and get on the internet and have some internet fun that way using you know, an older Amiga style browser under Apollo OS. One of the things you can do, they, they do do for you, is they have um, the Amiga Explorer, or Apollo Explorer setup. So all you gotta do is run Apollo Explorer host, and then back on your Windows or Mac box, just get a, Apollo Explorer, Amiga Explorer, and, and then you can just transfer files back and forth that way. But just know that out of the box, you do have uh, internet. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video, you, you copied the, you downloaded the image, you, you put it on here, you booted it up, and it didn't ask you for any preferences. And you're like, well, Q, how do I set my preferences? Well, that's what you're gonna do next. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Here we go. And see this button here, it says Apollo Prefs. Now, what's gonna happen when you double click this, it's gonna tell you, hey, you wanna set your preferences. Cool. We're gonna have to reboot though. It's just how it works, all right? It's gotta do some back of house weird magic and voodoo. So when you double click this, it's gonna pop up and say reboot. You're gonna reboot. And then when you come back, you're gonna go back into preferences. And this time it's gonna start bringing up pop-up requesters that you can go through and, and, and configure it how you wish. It's gonna ask you like, do you wanna do uh, your time and what your key map is and your language and all, it's gonna go through all of those steps, okay? One of the things it's not gonna do is networking. You don't have to worry about networking. So there's no network stack, you know, panic. You don't have to run Miami or Roadshow. It's, it just, the networking stack is always in the background working. So this is more just for setting your preferences for date and time and your locale and your input and those types of things, okay? But that's how you access that. So if it doesn't ask you at startup, you gotta kind of go back in time by clicking Apollo Prefs, rebooting and getting in there. It'll also ask you things like setting your uh, WHD load preferences, which you can also access your WHD load preferences using these other tools in here. Speaking of which, there's a little button down here that says games. So let's click that and sure enough, you're gonna see um, a bunch of a uh, bunch of games. This little list here. Now, this is not everything. They they give you a nice sampling of around 85 games here, from this this list here, and see if we are doing a show all. Yeah, we're doing show all. So that's a pretty fun amount of uh, stuff, right? So let's go ahead and let's see. Let's try Wings. I love Wings. It's an amazing game. I don't have a joystick for this right now, but let's just see if it's gonna run, right? And show us an image and maybe some sound. Wait, do I have sound on this? I think I do have sound. Maybe I don't have sound. You know what? I might not have sound. Uh, yes. So the issue here is I have, the sound would be coming out the HDMI. This monitor that I'm using right now, which with the HDMI, uh, it doesn't, as far as I know, it doesn't have speakers. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'd have to like run a, oh no, it does have speakers. Well, shut up, Q, and let them hear it. So you can see it running wings here. Now this is a classic Amiga program, not as complicated as Lightwave, of course, but you can see it running with their WHD load setup. That's pretty nice. Oh, it's amazing. This happened not too far away from where old Holden Modify is located, actually. Okay, so yes, that works. That was fun. Look at that. Yay, wings. So yeah, you have some fun right out of the box, some classic Amiga stuff here you can play. I'm assuming that the reason uh, there's 85 is because they've gone through and tested all of these to make sure they work. And they were willing to go through 85 of some of the most popular Amiga games and 
That's much, much appreciated right there, like that. And down here, there's a button called Files, and it has a file browser program. That's kind of a familiar interface, doesn't it? Interesting, right, right? That's still there, nice and peppy. Internet, of course, is going to launch their demo version of iBrowse, which I said is not going to work because it is expired. And then if you click Music, you're gonna get this awesome Amiga amp thing going here. And very familiar, I'm sure all of you folks have seen this before. And yes, it'll play all of the fun things. It'll play mods, MP3s, and then pictures and videos. I don't really have anything here. So they do give you some clips. Do they? Here, here we go, birds. Let's see if that works here. This is using Reva. So yeah, here you go, Reva running, and they give you some nice kind of public domain video clips you can play to see if it works. And it's it's working nicely. You can go to emulators. In the emulators, we've got Stella, Neo Geo, uh, Scum. So let's go ahead and quit Reva. So DOS English, I'm gonna just gonna click start and see what happens. I want it all, all the puzzles, all the work. I have never played an adventure game, I'm scared. This is true. I am really terrible. All right, well, it seems to be working. Now, I'm not hearing any music right now, but we did hear sound effects earlier, so I don't know if this is an issue that, if it's a DOS version, did it come on CD and had CD music, or is there just no music right here? I don't know. Oh, there we go, and I hear some music. So, how do you get out of scum? I have no idea. Escape? Oh, no, that takes us to Monkey Island. Escape to Monkey... Ha <laughs> ha! Get it? I pressed escape to get to Monkey Island. Well, I couldn't figure out how to quit Scum, so I just went ahead and uh, rebooted. All right, well, I think that concludes my brief tour of Apollo OS 9.4 and the current Vampire update. Uh, yeah, for playing games and, and the ones they include, you can see them was working nicely. This interface is, is still looking really sweet. I think it looks clean. Let's go to screen mode. Sure enough, I'm at 1280 by 720. It looks a little soft because this is a 1080 monitor, but hey, 7, 1280 by 720 is plenty. And of course, you've got all of these other kind of Amiga era modes you can go through. And look, 1440 by 900. Whoa, wanna try that one? Oh, wow, yeah, there you go. So that's 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 getting closer to the, mon the monitor's native. So yeah, much sharper and clearer. But see, that worked. It didn't freak out or lock up or do anything weird, right? And under graphics, they do include POV Ray and Photogenics, which is nice of them. So Lightwave, right? I've shown you all this other cool stuff games and everything that's kind of fun let me do a reboot again just to make sure everything's clean and happy and i haven't mucked anything up plus you get to see how fast it reboots which is about how long it takes to start too it's quick so if we go here let's go into my storage let's uh let's fire up lightwave so how does lightwave run on the apollo os vampire v4 standalone well this is the heartbreak of it all First off, it does open up this beautiful, just absolutely beautiful screen. It's the correct uh, aspect ratio and size. It's like Amiga perfect, Lightwave perfect. Text is super clean. It looks as clean as any RGB to HDMI's I've ever seen. Now, if we go up here and click Surfaces, hey, that pops up nice, nice and fast. I'm like, cool, let's click on Default. Sure, that's what it should do. Let's go over to Images. Nice, go to Lights, Cameras. Look, this is super fast, just as it's supposed to be. Love it, love it, love it. So let me go over here and click continue and you're thinking, cool. Now what I should be able to do is in this viewport here, click and hold with the left mouse button and just start rotating this camera around and it should be super, super zingy fast. Like, oh my gosh, AGA chipset times a thousand. And as you can see, it is a slideshow. I don't know. And this has been a consistent problem I've had with Lightwave at least on the standalone product or at least using Apollo OS, I should say, because if you install Workbench 3.0 or higher, you don't have this problem. And then if I go up here to one of these panels, fast, 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 continue. Again, left click here. How Lightwave updates, I believe it uses fast memory. It processes what the user's doing and then copies it to chip memory, I think. I think that's what Lightwave does to update this display. And so as you can see, it's just unusable. You cannot do anything with this. And then once it's done and I go up here, see how now I'm clicking and nothing's happening? It's because, yeah, whatever Lightwave is doing here, it has to wait for. Now remember, this viewport here, this is a form of real-time rendering. So Lightwave is doing all the math to basically present you a real-time 3D world for this view. And whatever that is, uh, Apollo OS still hasn't quite cracked that part of Lightwave and what it's trying to do, how it's talking to the chipset, or how it's reading and writing from the memory. I don't know, it's a bunch of tech stuff, but that is a, 
that is one of the big problems with me, you know, because you know everything I like to do is involved with the graphics portions of of Amiga. Like I, I show all the graphics programs. Well, not getting this to work is kind of a showstopper for me, but I always like to keep coming back to these updates. Every time they update the product, come back and see uh, see how things are going, right? And uh, we're here. I'm gonna, of course, let them know about this once again and see if any headway can be made. I mean, it's so far, it's been really awesome, as I've shown uh, earlier here, right? Moving along great, really reliable. There's no lockups or crashes or weird things. So, you know, can't complain about that. Just still having this consistent light wave issue. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. Well, I guess that's about it for now. Uh, again, look in the description for some of the things I talked about earlier. And uh, this is always a growing adventure with this. One thing I like about Apollo OS and the and the product is that it's uh, it's something that can keep living and growing. It's it's their own thing. They've they've made taken great pains to make sure that it's they're writing their stuff from scratch for themselves to, to sell to all of us. And you know, look, the operating system is free. The hardware costs money, and some think it costs too much money. But I don't know if you've looked at Amiga prices lately. But the Apollo products are starting to become a deal compared to real Amiga hardware. Yeah, I appreciate this, and I really hope they keep moving forward with it. Uh, frustrating when things don't work the way they want them to, yes. But as long as you know someone is still holding that candle and keeping the flame going and moving forward with this, I'm always excited to look back at updates on this. And I hope you guys are too. Again, thanks for everybody who sticks around and watches all this stuff and subscribes. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm done with this video.